live from Nice, France, it's theCUBE, covering .next Conference 2017 Europe, brought to you by Nutanix. Welcome back, I'm Stu Miniman and this is theCUBE's live coverage of Nutanix.next conference in Nice, France. Happy to welcome to the program a first time guest, D Danielle Moncuso, who's fresh off the keynote stage, uh, the Director of Innovation and Engineering at TI Sparkle. Uh, according to your website, TI Sparkle's the world's communications uh, communication platform. So thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. All right, so for those of us that aren't familiar, give us a little bit of outline uh, of, of the company first. Yeah, uh, so TI Sparkle is um, a fully owned uh, company belong to um, Telecom Italia Group, spin off by the mother company back in 2003 uh, with the mission to develop wholesale uh, and uh, corporate multinational uh, retail and enterprise business abroad. Um, 37 countries uh, presence uh, office, uh, 125 pops all around the world, uh, that becomes around 1,000 if we consider also the partnership with, uh, with, with other operators hundreds of thousands of uh, kilometers of fiber optic spreads between Southeast Asia to Europe to North America and, and also South America via private back backbones, uh, via submarine cables uh, in consortia or bilateral. Um, in the top rank for uh, IP transit with our Seabone backbone, we are number seven in the world and I think number nine at the moment for uh, voice um, in terms of Minix exchange to international carriers. Okay, and so innovation and engineering, yeah. what's under your purview, uh, what's the relationship with kind of the IT department? Yeah, mm, basically uh, I am a peer within uh, a division called ICT engineering, I am a peer with the um, IT responsible. Uh, her role uh, is basically to develop the new digital OSS and BSS of the company, as well as uh, the, mm, let's call it, uh, uh, East-West API for the internet working with uh, other peer operators. My role is instead to make this world speaking with uh, the network elements, uh, the network domains, uh, the cloud domains, uh, all the infrastructure. And we are undergoing a severe transformation altogether because, of course, things must be very much synchronized in this new crazy world that is accelerating day by day. Yeah, uh, so I, I, I followed telecom a lot of my careers. I, I worked for you know one of the companies that spun out of AT and T back in, yeah. in, in the U S. So uh, you know many companies talk about digital disruption. Digital has had a huge impact on telecom. Uh, you know transformation. You talk about fiber rollouts. It yeah. used to be. I remember you know in the '90s it was like oh. We're going to have infinite bandwidth, and you know, wait, prices bubble. are going to go there. Uh, things like that. So, what, what what are some of the key drivers? You know, what's changing in your business? What so the, the stresses and you know, opportunities? Well, we, we need to analyze uh, in a uh, two parallel scenario. One is the wholesale uh, business, uh, on which uh, we were a pioneer. We are still uh, uh, having a, a severe and big role uh, in the market. But the issue is that wholesale is starting not to pay anymore. We face uh, a severe, a dramatic price uh, decline uh, year over year. And therefore, uh, in order to get the sustainability of the company, you need uh, to start turning the bar uh, in a strong way towards the enterprises, because it's there that is the money. Mm. So uh, this doesn't mean that, uh, of course, uh, you go out from the wholesale. We are a wholesale player. Our strategic plan imposes us to consolidate and to enrich the offering of uh, all sales services, as well as developing uh, new services uh, focused for the enterprises, therefore with uh, uh, high capability of execution, uh, very strong and fast time to market, uh, and uh, enriched with a plethora of uh, um, plugins uh, that make uh, the customer feeling the sparkle experience, as we call it. Um, most of the actions on which we are active at the moment uh, are the new dynamic services that are provided uh, uh, as part of the Metro Ethernet Forum. Therefore, all the all on-demand paradigm, new connectivity, connectivity towards cloud uh, platforms, connectivity enriched by cloud experience. Um, in order to, to reach these targets, uh, you need to abandon a little bit the concept of network infrastructure 
you need to scale it up, you need to softwareize it, you need to make it closer to IT. And at the same time, IT needs to come closer to the network, and the two needs to interwork together in an orchestrated way. Uh, this is the new word, the, the, the fashioned work, orchestration. In reality, we like to speak more of choreography, because orchestration is something that we see uh, just residing within the company. Meaning, uh, if, you, if you think uh, uh, an orchestra director is uh, uh, making uh, all the instruments, uh, all the artists uh, that are within the company to play in an harmonized way. But in reality, we want to export to our, towards our customer this experience. And therefore, we see it more as a ballet. So the orchestration is the baseline. But in reality, we want the customer to feel embraced by what Sparkle can offer to it. All right, so connect the dots for us as to where, where Nutanix uh, came into it, uh, how that, that discussion started, yeah. and, and what you're using with them today. So this, uh, let's say, paradigm of the digital transformation in Sparkle started around two years ago. Uh, we stopped uh, one moment uh, and we said, okay, what should we do? How can we do it? How can we embrace it? Of course, there are a lot of issues that are related to business processes, organization skills, but also the technology is a fundamental driver and is of utmost importance. So, we started to design a new data center, initially for our internal purpose, and we decided that in this data center, all new technology, all new uh, software-driven uh, uh, capabilities of the company should be deployed, uh, but if you see the numbers of Sparkle, Sparkle is a lean and clean company. We are just 700 people, despite a global presence. Yeah. And so we cannot approach the transformation using the old paradigm of the best of breed, which is a traditional way of approaching things for telco providers. Uh, we instead decided to go completely to a new road. We started to do a strong analysis on hyperconvergence. And we came to terms with Nutanix. Uh, finally, the new data center for what concerns all new network application is based on uh, Nutanix nodes, and we force all our vendors to certify their application on Acropolis. So everything is AHV based. And when we say everything, we are speaking about applications like uh, uh, voice over IP monitoring probes, we are speaking about lifecycle service orchestrator, we are speaking about network domains orchestrator, cloud automation and brokerage platform. Everything is running on Nutanix uh, on this huge cluster with different uh, nodes uh, uh, that are uh, more or less powerful depending to which application we pin off. But the, the main driver there is uh, easy of use, predictability, easy capacity and management. Everything runs uh, in a very orchestrated and simple way. Yeah, so you know, really relatively lean organization. Uh, so, you know, simplicity is something we talk about. Kind of base hyperconverged. Uh, I have to imagine that one of the reasons you looked at HCI, and is that why Nutanix uh, was the one that you chose? Yeah, absolutely. Those are uh, mm, fundamental features for us, and uh, in the development that we are doing with Nutanix, uh, we are working very close with their engineering to develop also new features that are customized for our solutions. We see that uh, uh, at the moment they are a perfect fit for our uh, working model. Uh, they are also a very fast company in developing things, uh, agile development. Uh, they are kind of uh, having some predictability of what customers need in future. Uh, uh, back at the keynote a few minutes ago we were discussing about the usage of Nutanix uh, for arranging uh, uh, public cloud environments. Uh, we just say that HV needs a further step of uh, maturation, but Sonil uh, was immediately coming out with uh, Microsoft implementation and multi-tenancy features that, in our opinion, what the small missing tip to complete HV as a complete uh, cloud solution. Yeah. So we are going there, uh, also this is our direction. Yeah, so uh, absolutely, in your keynote you spoke a lot, AHV, yes. getting it certified on all the absolutely. platforms. Want to talk about that cloud strategy. Um, yeah. What are you using from Nutanix? Are, are you, do public clouds fit into uh, your picture? Can you paint yeah. us the, kind of your cloud strategy? So, uh, let's, let's always remind that we are a telco, no? So, 
are we going to compete with the big guys? It's not in our court, it's, it's not in our interest, and it's not possible, frankly d speaking. Let me, let me ask, there's lots of telecoms that yeah. tried and failed. Yeah, we, we are not yeah. even trying, yeah, yeah. we are not even trying. In a telco like us, uh, that basically does not have a real captive market, no? We are operating abroad, so yeah. theoretically, we are the small guy that is going to face the incumbent in the market. But we have regions on which we have a consolidated presence, uh, especially in Europe, uh, and we have data centers in Italy, Greece, uh, and Turkey. Uh, these data centers were traditionally addressing a co-location business, both for carriers and on enterprises. So we decided when we, um, the direction was, let's focus on enterprise, uh, to start the cloud journey, but focusing initially on those markets. Again, uh, we started with the best of breed approach because this is what is in the telco cords. The telco needs to provide a service with a guaranteed SLA in a, with an infinite number of nine behind it. So at the beginning, the first choice is, okay, let's choose and let's pick the best pieces from each technology. Uh, it works, you arrange the solution. The problem is that you need to operate the service. And when you create a cloud infrastructure with the best of breed approach, but you want to maintain lean and clean operations, then it's becoming complicated. Because you need to have uh, a plethora, a bunch of specialists for each technology that you are going to implement. Meaning that you have uh, uh, storage specialists, storage area network specialists, backup specialists. It cannot work like this. If you don't have the ability to scale globally, you will never be able uh, to get sustainability there. So in our cloud 2.0 strategy, which we are started already to apply from last year, Nutanix came to help because basically we did an analysis, we did several proof of concept, and we found out that we can get the same SLA, the same predictability, the same or even better quality of service to our customer but using something that, first of all, is manageable by generalist IT skilled people. Uh, you can simply expand uh, by scaling uh, more uh, bricks. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's uh, also more cost effective in terms of ratio between CAPEX and OPEX. Um, you don't have granularity of OPEX. You have only one player to whom to speak, fight, negotiate, but, but finally get results. Yeah. So that is the current scenario. Uh, on the cloud, as I said, we are still uh, a vSphere shop, but we are starting already the move to HV, especially after this announcement of micro-segmentation coming true. What is our future in cloud? Um, we are going to address a transformation of our pops all around the world. They will essentially become uh, micro data centers from which we can uh, offer data proximity, data locality to customers, especially taking into consideration the GDPR entering uh, from next year onward. Uh, I expect that many customers will uh, feel a little bit more reluctant to disperse their data on centralized uh, data centers without their having control uh, of where really the data stays. Uh, so we are studying uh, also with Nutanix, uh, a uh, very small uh, and compact solution that we can install in one of our cabinets in the POPs. Uh, and this will come also with the strategy of integrating these services with uh, network virtualization, so load balancing, firewall, everything residing on the same stack, and SD1. Uh, in this way, we are quite confident that we can uh, for sure uh, leverage on our existing customer bases uh, but also try to attract more customers that at the moment are not interconnected to our network via local loops, simply using the internet as a new means of communication. All right, so Danielle, a lot of pieces here. Just final, get a brief statement from you. It looked like you're looking at Nutanix, you know, it, what they would call kind of the core, is their cloud, even the edge uh, yeah. is starting to took there. Why Nutanix? We have done some analysis. Uh, we have done a uh, few proof of concepts uh, also with competitors, uh, or with former competitors, let's say. Uh, 
What we really missed, in our opinion, was the comprehensive vision. We understood from Nutanix, I mean, apart the you know, numbers of performances that somehow you can uh, also get with uh, other uh, solutions, but what was missing in the others was the focus, the strategy, the vision, and uh, the certainty of the target that they wanted to get through. Speaking with Sunil, speaking with uh, Bini Gill, speaking with all the guys, we see that they have uh, a strong vision of where they want to be in a couple of years from now. And we have seen that uh, they have a high capacity of execution and fast. And uh, we, we basically have the same targets. We want to get the same achievements. So for us, it's a very reliable partner to work with in the next few years. All right, well, Daniel Mancuso, really appreciate you joining us. We know My Nutanix pleasure. always looks uh, for the customers that are helping to move that digital transformation, be a partner with them. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from the Acropolis in Nice, France. I'm Stu Miniman, you're watching theCUBE.